What I have here is my most anticipated fragrance of the year. I'm insanely excited to have this fragrance in my possession. It's a recent release by a Canadian fragrance house, which I'm proud to admit, being a proud Canadian fragrance reviewer. Hey man, what's up bud? Hey bro. Hey pal. Hey, hello, hi. Hey, what's going on, your bless? And speaking of which, welcome to the best smelling channel on YouTube, James from J Royal with a live first impression. I'm back in my old setup today because we are renovating the studio space currently, which is very exciting. We'll have new looks for you guys, some eye candy, some sick visuals. But today we're in the semi-old space, which I do enjoy, it's a bit cozy. In fact, I also think this fragrance may be cozy as well because it features one of my favorite notes in fragrances, honey. My favorite fragrance of all time is Zerjof Naxos, which is a, a honey tobacco fragrance. And if this is anything like that, then we're in for a, a treat. So without further ado, let's get into this box and see what we have here. Just open that. Oh shit, that is... Uh, fresh meat. Name that game in the comments, please. Please. <laughs> get that engagement up, guys. We can do better. So, dude, smash like. Ooh, okay. Some samples. A cute handwritten note. You know which house this is, guys. Kudos to you. Oh, just the packaging is absolutely stunning, guys. I just ruined the paper. And yes, I do have the special edition packaging with the honeycomb pattern on. Love the packaging, love the detail, the attention to detail by Victor. And of course inside we have the bottle. So the notes according to this little Ooh. sticker on here is orange ginger syrup, royal jelly accord in the top, broom, heliotrope, mimosa, and orange flower in the mid, and benzoin, labdanum, musks, sandalwood, tonka, vanilla in the base. Sounds amazing. <laughs> But I'm not gonna let this be a biased review. I'm going to apply this now, get a first impression, wear it for a couple hours, come back and give you my impressions of the dry down. So the whole fragrance is lifespan. This is gonna be my scent of the day. I'm currently not wearing a fragrance. So really, really stoked. And also for the record, um, definitely paid full price for this. <laughs> Victor didn't give me any special discounts. He gave me a few free samples, which I really appreciate Victor. Uh, but this is a full purchase thing. So maybe I'll be even harsher because I didn't get it for free. <laughs> Enough chit chat. I know you guys don't like too much chit chat. So let's try this on. <coughs> it's not the fragrance that made me cough. But... Okay. Mm, smell it in the air. Wow. Okay. It's the... Initial impression I got was I smelt the honey, um, and as you come in, there's a lot of florals, but it the honey in here it smells like like farmers market honey, like in a big jar with a big ladle or that kind of spoon thing that sometimes you see in honey commercials. And I think that's that royal jelly accord. So it's not just a honey flavor type of thing. It's authentic glob of honey. That's working really, really nicely with these little floral orange blossom elements. Really nice. And I feel that honey can sometimes lean feminine, kind of like vanilla, the sweet, sweet notes. But in this case, even with all the florals, it has quite a bit to it that makes it pretty gender neutral, I feel. I was scared that this would be feminine. Definitely good enough to wear. So let's do three sprays. I love the mist on this. It's very fine and velvety. Oh. Wow, okay, when I applied it, it was like such a unique smell. Wow, man, that first impression was incredible. Sometimes fragrances, when you spray them on, you get that blast of alcohol, you get a little bit of that weird tinge in your nose, and then it settles down and you're like, okay, great. But here, it's the opposite. As soon as you spray it on, you get this amazing, amazing smell. But this is awesome. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna wear this for an hour or so whenever I get back to this video. And I'm gonna give you my impressions on how the fragrance dried down on me. But once again, Victor has captured something quite unique here. So let's just hope that this euphoria 
continues on with the fragrance's lifespan. So I'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> Go and do some work. Maybe paint a wall or something. <coughs> Stay hydrated, bitches. <laughs> so I wore this today for the whole day, clearly. Scent of the day. B by Zoologist. Right from the get-go, when I put this fragrance on, it smelled great. It had a lovely, slightly floral, waxy honey aspect. And as I wore it, the fragrance remained fairly similar, but the honey became even more waxy, which I personally liked. I wouldn't say this is a very smoky fragrance, but it still has that churchy type of feel strictly because of the waxiness. I love the use and implementation of honey in this fragrance. I also love bees. Who doesn't like bees? A lot of people, but bees are very important. Save the bees. Oh, no, not the bees. Yes, the bees. My concern going into this was in fact, is it too feminine to wear? <laughs> is, it a, is it gonna be a problem for a pseudo masculine guy like myself to pull off? And the answer is no. I don't think it is. I don't think it's overly feminine. That being said, I do appreciate unisex or even feminine perfumery. A lot of niche fragrances aren't stereotypically masculine or feminine. They do kind of walk the line. And this is one of those fragrances. It's truly an artistic approach to perfumery rather than just something that's strictly made to smell fresh or to get compliments. Performance has been pretty stellar so far. It's an extrait de parfum, which means it has a high concentration of oils in here. So the longevity is going to be good, but the projection has also been phenomenal. Even six hours into wearing this fragrance with having three sprays on my neck, every inhale, I would smell it. And it wasn't overpowering. I also did a bit of research on good old Google on Fragrantica about what other people are saying about B. And it really seems to fall into two camps. You have the zoologist niche head purists that love everything Victor Wong's company does. And then you have the early adopter negatron dudes that are quick to be contradictory and just are looking for flaws here and there. For me and for myself, I've been really racking my brain to come to a real conclusion with this one off of my first day of wearing. Because zoologist fragrances by nature have been very polarizing to a lot of people. They're undoubtedly high quality fragrances that use high quality ingredients and charge a high price. Victor Wall. <laughs> Couldn't even give me a discount, you know? Hey, you know, you gotta make your money, right? <laughs> Fist pump the like button, punch it. Just click on it, thank you. I've always respected Zoologist for not only their attention to detail with the fragrance, but even the presentation. Right from the get-go, they had high quality bottles, which are actually stock bottles apparently, but they just look really nice. The cap is nice and heavy. The labels are great. The art direction is just phenomenal. You have these signature Zoologist drawings, interpretations of each animal or life form. <laughs> By definition, it's an indie house, but for every stretch of the imagination, it's a niche. These are niche fragrances designed for very specific tastes. And I would say that this suits my tastes quite perfectly. Honey is such an awesome note. It's not your standard vanilla, which is just kind of sweet creaminess. It's not tonka bean, which is so overused nowadays. And it just has a somewhat simple, spicy, sweet quality to it. Honey is different. Honey, you would think is just sweet, but it has a little bit of a bite to it. There's ginger in here too, which gives it a kind of a, a biscuit or a cookie type of feel, like a ginger snap. Uh, it's gourmand for sure. But those floral elements in here, the, the orange blossom, for example, it gives it a little more airiness and lightness considering how heavy the sweetness is in here. There's a wonderful sense of balance here, even though the main player is definitely, definitely honey. But honey comes from flowers, right? <laughs> kind of, like, they're all connected. And what I love about 
a lot of the zoologist fragrances, especially the ones that I own, not only are they representing the specific animal, but also where it inhabits, perhaps, right? It's a smell oh. I haven't really smelled before, which I really, really appreciate. From start to finish, pretty awesome. Not a ton of development, not a ton of change that happens throughout. As it dries down, I would say that floral quality becomes a bit softer and then it just becomes full force, waxy, honey, slightly smoky in a way. It has that sort of myrrh feel to it, labdanum, and a bit musky. To the people that say, oh, I wasn't impressed, or <laughs> it's too sweet, that one I don't get. I mean, whenever you complain about a fragrance being too strong or too potent, usually just apply less of it and you'll be okay. And that's what I found with this. I applied three sprays and it's the winter time. So, you know, you tend to wear fragrances that project more in the winter. Three sprays is definitely as many as I'd go. And as you can see, the mist is pretty fine, but it does pump out a decent amount of fluid. So do not overspray it or you will not have a good experience. This is also a warning to people that decant this or buy decants of this or little samples. Just keep in mind that the sprayer in whatever decant you have will be different than the one on the actual bottle. That's why I find it's always best to judge a fragrance in the actual presentation that it comes in. That's the way the guy who made it intended it to be sprayed on you. If you got Amen in a splash bottle, not gonna smell good. But that's why they have those crappy sprayers because you can only get a little bit out at a time and you're not gonna over spray. Same here, spray wisely and just let it live. I really look forward to wearing it more and I'm really hoping this isn't a recency bias where it's just a fragrance that I picked up, spent a lot of money on, wanted to like, hyped it in my own head and now I'm sort of making myself like it. I hope I'm not doing that, I doubt it but it's possible. And I think even though it's so sweet, that, that floral quality to it makes it kind of wearable in the more mild weather as well. Wouldn't reach for this in the summer. I wouldn't even wear this on a date. This is probably more a me fragrance, which I think niche fragrances should be. It's a niche representing something very specific taste-wise. And this is specifically within my realm taste-wise. If you trust me and my taste in fragrances, if you like things like Naxos, if you're not scared of gourmand fragrances that smell like desserts, not that this smells like any particular dessert, I would strongly recommend you get a sample of this, guys. This is a special fragrance, not necessarily made for everyone, but of all the zoologist fragrances I've tried, this is one that I feel will appeal to a lot of people. Maybe a larger Ooh. percentage of women will like this, but if you're into niche fragrances, you wear some pretty out there stuff. So this is definitely within a lot of your wheelhouse. So I wanna thank Victor Wong of Zoologist, not for sponsoring this video, not for giving me anything, um, but just for making really, really awesome fragrances. You know, he's, he's a Toronto boy like myself, which I'm insanely proud of. And he has never compromised on quality, continuously innovating, and even though he works with a lot of fantastic perfumers, he's pretty much a one-man show. So kudos to him. And in a world of clone houses, I mean, there's a place for them, but it is just so refreshing to see someone making things that are just so unique, creative. The vision is so clear. Unfortunately, this video isn't very clear because I'm rambling now, but I also plan on doing a little video on these. So these are five of his newest releases. I haven't seen them yet, but the first one looks like bat, but a new formulation of bat, which is quite interesting indeed. And then we have chameleon as well, dodo, squid, and then of course, bee. What I'm going to do here, guys, is because I have an official sample of B. <laughs> if you guys have Facebook, check out the J Royal Facebook group because I will be giving away this official sample of B to one lucky group member. Um, if you don't have Facebook, then sorry. But I really want you guys to experience this fragrance as well. And I'm actually very curious to know what your opinions are on it. But in the meantime, if you wanna see some royal reviews where I go a little more in depth on fragrances, you can check it out here. It's a cool video about a fragrance that I enjoy. Oh, and for the guy that was complaining about my asymmetrical beard here, 
I actually had facial reconstructive surgery when I got mauled by a pit bull, a uh, bit of a scar here. So they had to pull this over and rebuild my face. So yeah, it's not really perfect. It should have been like this, but that's what happens when uh, pit bulls exist.